it, but tell me in a minute if you see kind of what I see. Well, actually, you're in a, some of you are in a commercial, right? Boy, I should be getting money for those ads, shouldn't I? Okay. So, I'm um, ready. Let's see what happens when it goes to the next thing. I'm there, right? Does it show the right full screenish looking thing? Okay, now, a couple of things. Since I'm in this mode and I realize something, I'm in somebody else's project from before. Anybody know, and this is something worth putting in your um, notes, anybody know how to get rid of everything in your inventory with a command? What? Slash clear, good, slash clear. Okay, this always makes me think that it's great to know that there are all these, and look up on the screen. It should have been on both screens. I don't know why that one doesn't want to go on. Here we go. Um, the commands, when I type slash, you notice how all the different commands I could do come up? And let's say I type in, because we're going to do this in a minute with an NPC. Let's say I want to give myself something. See that slash give? You're going to be better off looking up here because you won't have the lag over there. Give. Now, do you know how I give something to myself or how about to the nearest player even? So see how it says up here when I start doing, oh man, and that part's cut off. Um, oh, let's see if this is why. Well, no, I don't want to do that really. You don't see the at, I gotta fix the TV a little bit. All right, well anyway, give at P means the closest player, and in this case it would be me, hopefully if it works this way, and I want to give myself a diamond sword. Okay, boom. See how it gave me a diamond sword? Now, the reason I show you this with the commands also, because this will help us when we do the stuff with the um, actual command blocks, but also the NPCs. So if I'm not sure how to spell something so that it'll work um, here, let's say I know I want a diamond helmet. Do you see how up here it's diamond underscore helmet? That's important, underscore helmet. If I typed in diamond space helmet first of all it won't work let's see what it does give me nothing because it doesn't understand that part of it's because when you're coding in general if you put a space somewhere in a line of code it usually indicates to the computer like give space diamond or whatever right and then the space would usually indicate that i'm going to do a new command or something after but in this case that diamond helmet is diamond underscore helmet, and that's the only way the computer will recognize it when I ask for it, okay? So you get the, the general idea, because the neat thing about this is, let's say you learn other commands like teleport. Any of these commands can work in um, with an NPC or a command block, as long as you know the command. So the neat thing about Minecraft is there are all these commands I can do to automatically make things happen. Now, I could type them all in individually when I want them, but it's a lot more powerful to know that there are ways to make them happen automatically, like a command block, which we'll learn about in a day or so. But for today, NPCs can do that. And the reason we're learning about NPCs is twofold, really, or several fold. Remember how we talked yesterday about the importance of narrative in your games and the story? And you are creating a digital story, right? So you want to be able to tell your story throughout the game, right? Now, what is an NPC? Do it doesn't even necessarily move. It's a non-player character. You've probably played other games with NPCs, right? Oftentimes, in a game you play with an NPC, the idea is you walk up to this, like, wise old wizard, right? And you talk or interact with that wise old wizard, and that person guides you through the game a little bit, right? So that's what we have going on here, okay? But now, with it, so we're going to use an NPC. So I'm going to go to my inventory by hitting E, and I'm going to type NPC. Now, this is something important for your notes. Okay, let's see. I'm going to uh, see something for a second. Okay, a lot of you, when you're in your game, I'll go to, to put it down an NPC, and I can't put it down, and I'm very frustrated. Okay? In Minecraft Education Edition, there's a mode called World Builder that you need to be in to put down some of the unique items, one being an NPC, one being a poster, one being a deny or allow block. So I have to 
actually enable world builder mode or toggle it to true to use it. Now, here's another thing. If you're working on a team and there are like four of you on a team, one person created the game, the other three people did not, right? Those three people do not start out with what they call op privileges. Are you familiar with op on a server? Okay. Op or OP means that you are you have the ability to be an operator or like an administrator almost on the server. So if, let's say, somebody creates the server and everybody else wants to be able to do this world builder stuff, if you're working together, that person should op you. And what they would do is they would do slash op at A, and that would make everybody in the server have these operator privileges. Now, if you have 30 people in your server and they're not the people you want to have op privileges, you wouldn't op everybody. But when you're working on your game with your partners, you certainly should, okay? In my case, it says could not op because I'm already opt or higher. But in your case, if you're the one who created it and you put op space at A, it will say opt and these people. So a player in your world cannot use world builder until they're opt. So in your notes somewhere, it should talk about the importance of slash op to give them the operator privileges and slash WB to work with NPCs. Okay, so now I'm, I have WB true, right? So I right click and look at that. Did you see that? What happened? What happened? NPCs are starting to be able to be spawned from their little egg. So now I right click on an NPC, non-player character. It could have a name and actually I'm gonna change the skin too. Um, which one do we want? Uh, oh, we're out of skins there. I'll go with, this guy looks kind of like a doctor to me. We'll make him the, the doctor in our story. So we'll call him, and I did this last class too, Dr. Bob. Okay? Now, Dr. Bob can say stuff to us through the dialogue. Now, maybe at the beginning I'll say, you know, uh, welcome... Weary traveler, we understand you are going on an important adventure to save our village. Let me give you some items to help along your way. Stay safe. We need you alive. Okay? Okay. So that's just what the dialogue would be. Now, when I go out of this, if I right click, it still looks like I can edit it, right? Why is that, do you think? Because World Builder is still on. If I change it, now I interact with Dr. Bob, and it looks like I'm interacting with Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob is telling me something, right? Now, I'm going to go back to World Builder because I want to use it. Now I'm going to interact with Dr. Bob again. I'm going to go to Advanced Settings. Now, Add URL. Let's say you have a puzzle in your game and you want to bring the person out of your game to go to Google, okay? Maybe you go like this and you call this button Google and maybe Dr. Bob's asking us something and we're thinking, ooh, let's go out there, find the answer, come back and then answer him or something, right? That's a possibility. So now I go to slash WB, I interact with him and I go here and it takes me to a web page which brings me to Google. I'm still in Minecraft, but I'm also in the web browser. Kind of neat, right? Let's say your story is a variation on Little Red Riding Hood. I might want to say, you know, we're telling this one version. Oh, click here to see the original Little Red Riding Hood, right? And then I take them out and they can read it. Or maybe you have a web page that goes with your game that has clues. And on that web page, you put stuff. That would be wild and crazy, huh? So anyway, there we go. So now I want to go back to the editing mode. Now this is where... To me, the exciting part of NPCs comes into play. I can add a command. Now, who here has worked with command blocks before? Who knows what a command block is? What is a command block? Go ahead, Jeffrey, what is it? Beautiful. So you can put commands there. So we already learned some commands, right? Right? Like I could do clear. I could do give at P a diamond sword. 
Now, in a command block, like Jeffrey said, which is one of my sticking points, is that you can only put one command in each block. Do you wish you could put more commands in a block, Jeffrey? No, do you wish you could put more in one block? Oh, yeah. yeah, me too. Now, you have another good point. You can do it with something called chain commands. These are all things I'll show you. However, my favoriteest, favoriteest, favoriteest thing, is favoriteest a word? Of, with, with NPCs is that you could put multiple commands. And now let me tell you a little story. It's story time. So I had a class of seventh graders probably last year at some point. And the kid started doing this. Said, oh, can I do, can I have multiple commands in a command, in a, the command? And I laughed at him or her. And I said, no, that's silly. You can't do that. Because all I ever knew, like Jeffrey said, is that you could only do one at a time. But I did say, but you know what? Why don't you try it? Because either, either way, if he tried it and it didn't work, then we learned something. But guess what happened? It worked. I was like, I almost fell on the floor out of excitement because to me it was the best thing ever in the world. So I can do this. I can give... The player might need some cookies for the journey, right? Uh, maybe to test out the diamond sword, we want to even summon a... Um, what do we want to summon? A, uh, how about a zombie? Okay. And maybe we also, uh, want to change the game. Oops. See, and look at this. So much stuff in here. I go here now, game mode adventure. And what else do I want to do? Is that good enough for now? So right now as a test, we want to test out our sword. So he's going to say here, you know how sometimes in a game you have a little, um, area where you start practicing with your weapon so that's what this will be so maybe maybe we even want to summon a zombie and a a what what else should we summon nobody creeper i was afraid you'd say that okay so here we go so in theory all of these things should happen now okay so now i have to go back to world builder false who's ready and actually i'm going to clear my inventory again so we see if I really didn't have that sword. Who's watching? Ready? This is when I kind of feel like a little bit like a magician. Abracadabra. All right, wait. It did all that. Now, why do you think it didn't bless you summon the two creatures? Anybody know why? Um, no, I'm probably in peaceful mode. Oops. You can't summon aggressive mobs in peaceful mode. So now, let's try it again. I'll clear again. Hey, Dr. Bob, how are you today? Ready? You think they'll come this time? Uh-oh. Now I gotta fight them off. Oh, boy. There we go. We got the creeper. And here's zombie, zombie. And of course, you know what it didn't do, though? Wait a minute. What didn't it do that I thought I told it to do? I thought I told it to put it into game mode adventure, didn't I? Let's see why it... Oh, boy. Oh, see, now more are coming out. Advanced settings. Is game mode one word or two? Let's see. That's what I thought. So it should be right, right? Maybe, let's try this again. Um, game mode. Hmm, I think that should be working, but let's see. Let's just try this again and see. Oops, didn't mean that. All right, so ready? Let's try it again. Why am I putting me in adventure mode? Let's see. There might be, um, you know what? Hmm, this is interesting. Let's see. Game mode A. Now I'm in adventure mode. I don't know why the, oh, you know why? No, no, no. You know why? I know why. Watch this. Oop, and now I died. Slash uh, WB. Well, where'd I end up? Oh, I don't like that. Okay. Now I gotta remember where I was. I don't have no idea where I was. Game mode. See, you know why it was, though? I'll tell you. I didn't do at P for the player, so it didn't know who to put into game mode. Whatever. Now, I have no idea where that is now. Where's anybody see my NPCs anywhere? 
Funny thing is, usually NPCs would, um, you could see their name in the distance. Oops. I will right, we'll try it again with another one. Now, ready? So, slash WB. Now it's in false. Slash WB, it's in true. NPC. Ready? Here, we're going to fix it. We're going to now tell it. Watch. This is what, what I did wrong, I think. I have to do game mode at uh game mode a at p or game mode at p a let's yeah i think it's game mode a at p let's see if that works okay ready think it'll work i don't know yep that worked see it okay so in other words that's a little lesson we just learned to remember that for game mode as a command you have to indicate who it's going to be for got it you could make it for everybody if you did at A. So you get the idea of how these NPCs work? Now, stop, look, and listen again for a minute. So you're going to use NPCs throughout your game to kind of tell the story, right? One other little neat thing about NPCs. Let me show you this one last thing because a lot of you want to do this. Stop, look, listen. So you might want to teleport your player. Let's say I talk to the NPC so it teleports me into the arena because I'm going to fight there. I could do TP space. Now, are you familiar with coordinates in Minecraft? So coordinates are the X, Y, Z coordinates. Now, what I should do here, and you should do, is under settings, if you have show coordinates on, you'll know the real coordinates in the game. Right now, I'm at 33, 66, negative 98. You see that? You're going to probably get in the habit of doing what I'm about to do. And I'm going to put 33... 66, 90, negative 98 on my little scrap paper. Then let's say we want to go to the top of this thing up here. Oops. Okay. I want to, oop, I want to teleport the, the player up to here. Okay. Let's say I want to teleport me, whoa, boy, way up to here. Um, or how about this? This is slime, right? Is it? Uh, don't worry about that. I think it is, though. But um, I'm going to teleport. So this is 51, 85, negative 159. See that? So first, I'm going to bring myself back to where the NPC is. 33, 66, negative 98. Okay, here I am. Now I'm going to change this, and I'm going to teleport. Now, this is important. If I just teleport uh, to... 51, 85, negative 159. Do you know who's going to teleport there? The NPC, which I've done too many times by accident. Who do I want to teleport there? At P, because it's whoever the nearest player is. Anybody playing my game I want to do, right? Have them go up there. So now let's see. Slash WB. You ready? Boom. I talk to the NPC. I end up up here. Neat. Do you see how valuable that, that valuable that could be in your story? Like, you do something and he says, oh, you know, answer this question. And if you answer it one way, you go one place. If you answer another way, you go another place, right? And that you could do, you know, a lot of different ways too. So you'll start playing around with NPCs and the power of them. And be creative because anything you could do as a command, you could do in an NPC as a command. You get that? All right. So now you're working mostly on your story now. But if it helps you to start building a couple commands into your NPCs, go right ahead. And we're going to end the stream there. So thanks to anybody who was watching. Have a great day.